working on weight loss, then you probably want results fast. So what I'm trying to do in this video is give you a few pointers in losing weight in the right way, I mean the safe way. It may not be the fastest, but it sure is the safest. Let's get rolling. Well, here's the vital tip number one. We hear a lot that a little exercise is the key to weight loss, that taking the stairs instead of the elevator will make a difference. In fact, it's much more efficient to cut down on calories. The key to weight loss is achieving a negative energy balance or taking in less calories than you burn. 90% of your waistline battle is won or lost in the kitchen. Decreasing food intake is much more effective than increasing physical activity to achieve weight loss. Uh, let's say you want to achieve a 500 calorie energy deficit. You can either run in the park for about 4 kilometers, or not eat say one Snickers bar. It's really that simple. Some studies have pitted exercise against diet and found out that participants tend to lose more weight by dieting alone than by exercise alone. Of course, both together would be even better. There are low fat diets, low carb diets, low glycemic diets, paleo diet and then there's intermittent fasting and if it fits your macros and a lot of iterations of all of these. We know pretty much that any diet will help you lose weight if you follow it. There's really no magic diet. The truth is, any diet will work if you really follow it regularly. However, here's a quick warning. Skip the fat diets. Their results don't last. Moreover, you have healthy options, much healthier that you can start on. I know how tempting a diet craze can sound, especially if you have a lot of weight to lose. When you eat too few calories, you not only lose fat, but also precious muscle, which is the worst thing you could do because it kind of slows down your metabolism and makes it more difficult to increase exercise intensity or duration. So by all means, attack your weight loss goal on a fast track mode, but please do it right so you set yourself up for lasting success. Tip number two, exercise. Just like you won't overhaul your diet, you don't need to suddenly become a gym rat. We're aiming for sustainable activity here. So if you go from zero to five days a week at the gym, eventually you're going to burn out. A more manageable goal is to ramp up your activity slowly, starting with a steady state workout, where you go at the same pace for about 30 to 45 minutes. And then as you keep progressing, gradually add some strength training or high intensity interval training at least three to four times per week to retain muscle as you lose fat. Play with intervals of exertion and recovery. Because exercise helps use up oxygen, it causes your body to burn stored fat and helps you with weight loss, muscle strengthening and definition. Tip number three, drink water, plenty of it. Often we think we are hungry when our bodies are actually just begging for water. So it's important to drink enough water throughout the day to stay hydrated. Rather than worrying about stomach bloat and water weight, you need to realize that water will actually reduce bloating and overall weight. Water can be really helpful for weight loss. It is 100% calorie free, helps you burn more calories and even suppresses your appetite if consumed before meals. The benefits are even greater when you replace sugary beverages with water. It is a very easy way to cut back on sugar and calories. Drinking water not only keeps fat toxins moving out of the body, it also keeps your metabolism running optimally. It also increases the amount of calories you burn, which is known as resting energy expenditure. As a general rule of thumb, drink at least 12 glasses or 3 liters of water per day. Tip number 4. Sleep well. Lack of sufficient sleep may compromise the efficacy of typical dietary interventions for weight loss and related metabolic risk reduction. Chronic sleep deprivation can wreak havoc on your weight loss efforts. Your hunger hormones reset when you sleep. So if you're deprived of proper quality and quantity sleep, you're more likely to crave junk food. Sleep is also when your muscles repair post-workout. Moreover, studies have shown that sleeping fewer than 6 hours reduces leptin, 
um, the appetite suppressor hormone and stimulates ghrelin which is a hormone that increases appetite causing you to feel more hungry and less satiated then there's the hormone cortisol when you don't sleep enough your cortisol levels rise so make sure to get at least 8 hours of sleep every day to lose those extra kilos you've been struggling with tip number 5 no stress stress is another factor that can adversely affect your weight loss efforts when under stress your body also releases cortisol a stress hormone aka public health enemy number 1 scientists have known for years that elevated cortisol levels interfere with learning and memory lower immune function and bone density increase weight gain blood pressure cholesterol heart disease well the list goes on and on not only does cortisol upregulate food reward centers in your brain that make you want to eat more food but can also inhibit the breakdown of fat for energy and increase breakdown of muscle when stress is chronic you're fighting an uphill battle to lose weight setting aside 15 minutes per day to practice meditation will fortify a sense of calm throughout your nervous system mind and brain remember that maintaining weight loss requires long-term change and patience lifestyle changes are the best way to improve health and manage weight long term i realize it's much easier said than done it's about your willpower and finding a good balance of changes that you can successfully manage we all start somewhere and we are all afraid of change deep down it's in our dna so let's start with small changes and all the very best to you so thank you for watching and any queries that you might have please leave your comments or feedback in the section down below and i'll try to get back to you as soon as possible thank you